Hi, my name is Tia Brown. I'm sure we've met before in other biology gizmos, but today we're going to take a look at different scans of human chromosomes. Genes, genes, genes. Who doesn't like a good pair of genes? In the human karyotyping gizmo, you can learn to sort and pair the images of human chromosomes obtained in a scan. Let's take a look to see what the sex chromosomes tell us about subject E. Let's start matching chromosomes and see what we discover. First, we need to change our subject to subject E by clicking on the down arrow on the simulation tab. We can then move our mouse over the chromosomes and select one by clicking on it and dragging the chromosome down to the identify box. Then we can click the left and right arrows to change the matching chromosomes and determine which number our chromosome is. We can then drag the identify chromosome to the number on the karyotyping tab. We will continue to drag chromosomes to the karyotyping tab until there are none left. The last chromosome will tell us if subject E is male or female based on genetics. Which do you think it will be? Once we have matched all of the chromosomes, we can click on the diagnosis tab and discover if there are any diagnoses that need to be made. The reset button will remove all of the chromosomes from the karyotyping tab and return them to the starting location. As easy as grabbing and dragging, we can discover diagnoses or sex of a subject through the matching of chromosomes. Every gizmo has a set of lesson materials. This gizmo has some excellent real life connections in its lesson materials. I like to use activity A as a self-guided inquiry lesson with an ELA component. Students come to the conclusion through this activity that male and female karyotypes are different. The last question of the activity shows that at the genetic level, the X and Y chromosomes are different. And in fact, the X chromosome has more DNA because it is larger than the Y chromosome. The students have to write a short paragraph about their discovery and the reasoning behind it. As a follow-up to Activity B, I like to have the students complete the discussion questions from the teacher guide individually and then share with a group of three or four students their stance on each question to refine their answers that they then share with the class. I have my students do the follow-up activity karyotype practice found in the teacher guide in groups of three or four. This activity presents students with karyotypes representing several different chromosomal disorders. Students have to identify whether each karyotype is normal or not, and if it is normal, they have to identify which chromosome is affected. My students then do research to find out the name and symptoms of the disorder shown on the karyotype while recording their diagnoses and discoveries in their science journals. Did you find your perfect pair of genes? Or maybe you discovered something about a pair you already have. Check out our related gizmos, cell division and building DNA. I have to pair off. Bye for now, gizmos fans.